Hi, this is Lady C. Hey, this is JT. And we'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Critical Thought. Today's episode, we're going to invite a friend of ours, Yuri, from the Netherlands. And he's going to share with us what is happening in that country that is impacting the Jehovah's Witnesses. There is a documentary that is being put forth that will allow people to see another side of Jehovah's Witnesses, a side that for decades, the Watchtower has not wanted people to see or know about. Well, we're going to discuss that along with a few other things that are taking place in the country, along with protests, as well as, well as some of the comical things that are taking place. So we welcome you to our show, and we'd like to welcome our friend from the Netherlands, Yuri. Hey, Hello. Yuri. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're welcome. Absolutely. You know, we've had the chance to talk to you in the past, and you're like the eyes on the ground in the country to let us know what's going on. And uh, we wanted to just uh, have you share with us, because uh, we had talked before we, we went live on, on in, during the video, about the documentary. And this documentary, how do you think it will impact people or what will it let people know or see? Well, first of all, the documentary has gone viral here in the Netherlands. Like, everybody has watched it. Like, um, I have friends that come to me randomly, uh, ex-JW friends that told me that, uh, yeah, I have a colleague that told me, yeah, I saw the documentary. I didn't know. I didn't know this was happening behind closed doors because I thought Joe Witnesses were like nice people that knock on your door and uh, maybe bother you and wake you up in the morning and the weekends. But that they that they would um, shun, uh, hide, hide CSA cases and stuff like that. That was surprising. So the documentary has a lot of effect. We came in contact with Newbie. A, a production company in Amsterdam, and they they made a lot of uh, series, movies, and stuff like that for Videoland. Videoland is basically the Netflix of the Netherlands, to, to put it simply, and it's one of the biggest streaming services here. So, the fact that this documentary, this three-part documentary, got in Videoland has exposed everything. And when I watched, I already watched it uh, twice. It was a bit triggering because they really captured the essence of shunning. But also, they really did the homework really well. Like they, they no stone is left unturned. They really honed in on it. And also, how deep the child indoctrination is. Like, and it, when I watched it, it I'm, I'm like, wow, they really captured it really well. Like in small details. Like even when they would cite a scripture, they would let a child speak on it. So you would hear a voice of a child to emphasize how, in a way, how disturbing it is, you know, and how a child would have to follow these very draconian rules that Joe Vincent have and stuff like that. So it, it was, it's, it, I mean, put it this way, it's a really well-made documentary. It's really well-made. It already got great reviews, like four-star reviews already from other uh, companies, uh, review companies. So it's, it's a, and people have watched it. People are very impressed by it, even my colleagues know about it also and they were they were impressed they were like my god i didn't know i didn't know that jubo missus were like this uh, behind closed doors and even um the director uh, uh who, who uh, it, by the way it got also on the radio stations here in the netherlands they talk about it also the documentary on radio stations it, it's like uh, i even discovered that some of the djs even well-known djs used to be jubo witnesses so they were also tell twice that one of them is Igmar. He's also, he was in the documentary and he did something that I was supposed to do because one of the reasons why, um, uh, because I contributed in helping newbie to get the documentary because I would yeah give him information. I would give him everything. I, every, my experience, I will tell him about, uh, PMOs. I will explain to me about shunning and it will get all, they interviewed, I think more than 50 ex Jehovah's Witnesses and Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way. To, um, to get. So that's why you can see that the comment was really well made. The information is really correct. And one of the things that Igmar did, he, he went with a hidden camera and microphone to a Kingdom Hall. And I was supposed to also do that because uh, they saw my video, maybe we'll talk about it later, where I did a protest at Battle, where I jumped over the fence and did a protest. And, uh, and the producers were like, oh man, we, we, we like this guy. We got, we got to have him in our documentary. And, uh, <laughs> and the, the <laughs> The plan was that I would go with a hidden camera and, and audio where they would uh, record me being shunned. But 
I, I was honest with them. I'm like, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. I, it's, it, it was too much. I think it would have been emotionally heavy for me. But Igmar did do it. And, uh, and he had the same exact reaction that I would have. He was trembling. He was, he was almost crying. And it was, it, it was a very visceral uh, emotion that he had. And I was like, yeah, see, this is why I didn't do it. <laughs> this is why I could. But yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that um, the, the producers were really respectful to my decision. And I yeah. still got in the documentary, like I got my seven seconds, 10 seconds of fame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was really, it, it was really, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. It, the name is Jehovah van Godlos. Um, loosely translated is Jehovah, letting go of God, basically letting go of the cult. It, it, van Godlos is really hard to translate because it can also be translated with unhinged or being godless. Um, but in this context, I think letting go of God is more appropriate, but yeah, that's debatable. You know, some things are really hard to translate uh, from one language to another. Oh, but, yeah. um, but I recommend, I can't recommend the documentary enough. I really, especially those who live in the Netherlands, there are ways to watch it internationally with a VPN and stuff like that. Uh, but I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's a really well-made documentary. It explains the shunning really well. It explains also the CSA case, for example, to give a little uh, sneak peek, like Hadassah, because I know her personally. And uh, she was uh, abused when she, were, she was a minor, when she was uh, by her aunt and uncle. And they were also Jehovah's Witnesses. And, and she got excommunicated because she went to the police, because you know, the, you're know you not supposed to uh, bring bad name to Jehovah. Well, translates to, you don't want to bring a bad name to the company, Watchtower. <laughs> yeah. <But that's, laughs> one, 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 one of the points that you made was that the documentary uh, try to focus on accuracy because I know that was always one of the things that we would have or we would notice when they would do stories uh, in the United States on Jehovah's Witnesses. They would use the wrong term. They use the wrong word. And you know how a Jehovah's Witness is trained. They're trained. Anything that you can find something wrong with, you point it out and say, see, that's why, yeah, this, this is not real. It's not real. Uh, they may use them instead of using an elder or a ministerial servant, they may use the word deacon. And, 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 and so at that point is for as far as the Jehovah's Witness is concerned, nah, this ain't real, this ain't. Real. But whenever we're seeing, but today we're seeing that when they put these documents together, and the reason why is as you pointed out, they're getting information directly from people who have lived this life. They are now able to put it into these uh documentaries, into these programs, and when they present it, it's right on the money. It's round the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did. I'm impressed how Newby did their homework. They did it really well. They captured it so perfectly. I can't, uh, because I've seen other documentaries, of course, and I, I, because it's not the first documentary that I'm in. I was in an odd documentary that was also well made, but I've seen other documentaries. And in, like you said, yes, yeah, sometimes they, they say the term a bit wrong, they, but this one was like, wow, you can't, no, you can't. It's pitch perfect. It's pitch perfect. It's crazy how well made it is. Yeah. And I want to know how can we watch it here in the United States? Ron Pomo had a Reddit thread where he explains step by step, like, okay, you got to get a VPN. You have to make sure you are in, in the Netherlands. And then you can um, sign in to Videoland. It's literally videoland.nl and or .com. I think it's also possible, but do that now to be sure. And there you can have, you can also get a free trial for like two weeks and then you can sign a free trial and then you can watch the, the documentary. And I think they do have uh, English subtitle, but I can't be sure. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. So that it is in the, the Dutch language. Yeah, it is. It is in the Dutch language. Yeah, it, it is a Dutch documentary. It, it's focused on the Netherlands because even though there's a lot of information outside, but they really wanted to focus uh, even the battle uh, uh, um, headquarters here uh, is also in the, in the city of Emmen, where and they they even have a drone shot where they they, they showed it, and it's the, the one of the I was there with one of the cameramen, and they were like, "Wow, this is big!" They were they were impressed at how they were surprised how big the the headquarters was, and uh, they were also interested. You know what's interesting is to see how other people who are not associated with this organization see their reaction to the JWs, like how unreasonable they are and how weird they behave and stuff like that. So it's very interesting to see it in that way also. Wow. How yeah. many people are we talking about here in the Netherlands that's getting this information? 
So about 80 million people in the country. Yeah. Uh, know about the documentary. Yeah. This is a lot. <laughs> yeah. And so this kind of, these types of things become top of conversation very easily because people uh, in, in smaller countries, everybody sees it. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like a broadcasting in, in New York city. Everybody's broadcast New York city. So everybody will see it. And as we all know, Jehovah's Witnesses, they are just well-known people. They have purposely made themselves well-known by their door-to-door -door activity. Now that you're well-known, we're going to tell some things about you that people might not know. <laughs> right. I, I think it just makes it harder for them to be able to spread their rhetoric, too. And, you know, recently we've been hearing these reports about how the Watchtower is going to eventually stop door-to-door -door and all that kind of stuff. And I think they see that they're losing the battle. Yeah. And so they're just trying to stop the hemorrhaging right now. But like in the Netherlands, like you're saying, um, even with Norway and these other countries that are starting to, you know, hear more about the Jehovah's Witnesses and because of the ex-witness community and the activism, that's really what's helping the, these different governments around the world to see the Jehovah's Witnesses for who they really are. And I feel like, you know, they realize the Jehovah's Witnesses, the leadership realizes that it's like they can't fight against it anymore. You know, because yeah. nobody's going to tell us to stop telling them about this group. You know? <laughs> they can't stop they us. tell they us to stop talking to their people because we're apostates, right? Exactly, exactly. But, you know, I have a one, uh, maybe I have one, one question because you guys have been doing activism for a really long time. So I think uh, I do value your opinion on this one. And that is, do you think that they will eventually get rid of the shunning? Because as, as, as seeing the development that's been going on, with, because I was having this conversation also with Henry, the chairman, and I was even with with um, Patrick from from Belgium, and I got mixed mixed reactions. But it's a slippery slope because once um, you got governments be pressuring the Jehovah's Witnesses, even to the point that now they even allow <laughs> permit people to greet, uh, excommunicate in the kennel halls. Do you think they'll eventually remove the shunning? You know, you know that's that's a, that's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that we will see it continue to morph. Mm. Uh, one of the things that we have noticed about the organization, and they have, and this is they've been doing this for decades now. They are they are shifting more things away from the organization to the individual. Mm. But keep in mind that doesn't really change the behind the walls culture. So what they'll do is, and I can see them doing this they will simply no longer make it an official thing done by the organization which carries the license. Instead, it'll be something done by Sister Johnson, Sister Jones, Brother Davis. And that's why, for example, I, I give, let me give you a couple of perfect examples of that. If you look back to the publications on the topic of voting, yeah. the Watchtower used to say, Jehovah's Witnesses do not vote. They would just make a bold statement. As Jehovah's Witnesses, we don't vote. They don't say it now. Mm. Well, the individual, he has to decide. <laughs> so it's not coming from the official top level, which means you can't blame us anymore. Mm. And that's what they've done with a lot of things. They have shifted it over uh, to like, like blood. Blood used to be a disfellowshipping offense. If the elders found you took blood, they call you in. Are you sorry you took blood and live? No, I want to live. I don't care. <laughs> you be disfellowship. They won't do that anymore. There'll be no judicial meeting. So that was why they was able to tell the Belgium country, a Belgium, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses won't be, uh, there'll be no judicial action taken against a Jehovah's Witness. And that's true. There won't be no judicial action. They'll just be disassociated. And of course, because most people don't, not, I remember reading somewhere, I, can't, I, I have been looking for this clip, but it was it was something written either by Rutherford or, uh, or Nathan Noor, one of those guys. But he made the point that if people do not understand our words that we're using, Ain't our problem. Ain't our problem. And that's basically what he was saying. And that's been a trick that the Watchtowers always use. I mean, they're, they're very good at, the, the Watchtowers is very good at word salad, man. I mean, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Word acrobats. Like, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're word acrobats. Yeah. They, they, they almost like, they love doing mental gymnastics. Mental in gymnastics, yeah. man. I could, really? I could personally see them. Um, eventually getting rid of the uh, shunning. And the reason why is because we've, we've been talking to people here recently about how witnesses 
have been calling them to invite them to the meeting. Because remember how this new thing came about, about, oh, yeah, you can call and invite this fellowship once or whatever, however they are no longer going to meetings. And you can call them up and invite them to the meeting. And we've been hearing people talk about how they're in extensive conversations. And, yes. oh, you got to understand that you can wear pants to the king. Sisters can wear pants to the kingdom hall now and hey. talking about how men can wear beards. And so even though that layer of shunning is not there to that level that it was before, the person was still trying to, you know, bring them back into the religion. Yeah. And so as long as they know that um, they're kind of like they've been so indoctrinated that even though they let that little level of shunning go away, that person doesn't seem to be budging when it comes to anybody telling them to do their research, to look at, to see more about this religion. So I think that that may be the litmus test. You know, mm. how many people are going to leave this religion because we said you can invite somebody to the kingdom hall. If that doesn't make a, a, a splash or, you know, does, if, if people don't start leaving in mass because of that, Hey, we could, we could lower this a little bit more. You know? Yeah, because uh, I had friends, also actually friends who, one friend in particular, where his parents, especially his mother, like 20 years they haven't spoken, like in 20 years. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he got that call from her and he got really emotional. He said, and it felt, it's uh, in Dutch they say, uh, it, feels double. it feels double, meaning that you have two different emotions because, okay, so you had to have permission from a printing company to speak to your own child, right? But on the other hand, okay, you got you can now have contact with your parents, and, and it, it's it's it, it's it's kind of like mixed. And like even when he had a contact with one of his parents, with his father, for example, he like. They were talking, they were having a great conversation, and at the end, like, oh, you're coming to the memorial, and, and like you got a gut feeling like oh, okay, so this is the only reason why you call me, like after 10 years, and it, it's it's crazy. So I I, I can't I, to be honest, even I got a little emotional. I was also angry, and uh I I remember in one of my videos, I was like, listen, if you're one of those GWs that want to contact me. Don't bother because you're getting not only one middle finger but two because I don't oh, need yeah. you in my life. <laughs> uh, you can go. I don't. Know, you're fake. You people are fake. So uh, yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. You know what, um, Yuri? Now you, now you, you made a. You touched on something that took me back to the days when I was a Jehovah's Witness. You talked about how they talked to their son and had all this conversation. And then at the end of the conversation, oh, are you coming to the memorial? Well, how many times did we go to our calls? And my, I remember my mom had this, this one lady she used to call on all the time. And we would sit there for like an hour talking about everything, gardening, whatever, whatever it is we want to talk about for the whole hour. And then my mom would be getting ready to leave and she'd be like, oh, yeah, um, I got the latest magazines and we will leave the magazines, count the hour and leave. So it's almost like Jehovah's Witnesses are doing the same thing, calling their family members. And as long as they're just talking to them for however long it is, as long as they put that little plug in there about going to a meeting, I guess mm. they feel uh, they, they feel like that's a, a OK thing to do. That's an excellent yeah. point. That, I mean, <laughs> that, that is that's an excellent. I, I have thought about that, too. That, 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 that is so true. The witnesses will. Think about how they deal with college. <clears throat> when the Watchtower came out, out in the 90s and said, if you're going to go to college so that you can support yourself in the ministry, what happened? All of a sudden, the number of college enrollments went up, and the kids were just telling everybody, this is so I can support myself in the pioneer work. And that was when the society had to come back and, and did that. Every time the... See, here's the problem. Witnesses want to be free. Yeah, They want to be free. So if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And that's all there is to it. Like you said, there was in the in the announcement, it was very clear. You call them up, you speak, hello, you come to the meeting. And that's basically it. You can't have more than about 10, 12 words. Don't don't be doing no dialogue. But see, the witness is like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And that's what we're seeing, that's what we're hearing. People are calling, they're having out extended conversations about everything in the world. 
And um, and you're right. Uh, almost everybody we've talked to, especially people who've left for like doctrinal reasons or even even not even doctrinal reasons. They may have been in this fellowship or something. They may have quote unquote did. They're like, this is a double edged sword. It is. This is a real double edged sword. And one person even asked, he said, let me just make sure I understand this. <laughs> if they hadn't told you this, you wouldn't have called. Mm. Uh, oh, well. Uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it is nuts. So, so I mean, the, the, and the, the organization really has no choice because human rights now, it looks bad. Yeah. I mean, it really looks bad. Yeah. I mean, when people see... And they hear and like and, and you and you know how politicians are. Politicians are always looking for an issue. They're looking for a cause. You know, and yeah. that's just the way politicians are. And if it involves children, puppies, and animals, you might be in trouble. You yeah. might be in trouble. And there is absolutely no way in the year two thousand and twenty four mm. that you can explain this group of happy looking Jehovah's Witnesses. Mister Davis, who's worked down here at the office for twenty five years, one of the nicest men in the world. He actually is telling folks at his church, now, if your child get this fellowship, don't talk to him. People cannot believe that mm. because people know Jehovah's Witness and they seem like such wonderful people. So I know you, this man is not, you telling me this man won't talk to his daughter because she don't go to the same church? <laughs> and then when they find out, yeah, yeah people, right. in, people in disbelief. Now, what about the uh, news coverage um, on this documentary? Oh, the news. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the news coverage, uh, it, it's been on different radio stations um and even um newspapers have uh oh but because i have one newspaper where let me see it because i did because henry just sent it to me it was uh, uh oh it doesn't say which one but there was one newspaper that clicked with, with a title that says jewel winners do not want to change so the documentary came but they were not um, like it starts with a lot of people were shocked about the documentary series from Video Land, and but uh, unfortunately nothing changed. They, for example, when we protested at, at Battle, we gave a letter to start a dialogue, but they never responded on the letter. They never did anything. So they, so um, people are seeing it like like for like even the mayor of Emmen wanted to. Um, function as a uh, intermediate between us and the uh, watch uh, battle in Emmen and it, they, they're not willing to, they, they don't budge they're not of course because they, yeah it, it is it is a high control group but it, it, it people are now seeing it people are like okay so there's news coverage there's been on different types of newspaper like a different like all the big uh, from Trau, New Pentanel um, it has been different newspaper new coverage about the documentary and the reaction of Joanne's obviously they they have this um boilerplate uh, reaction e- uh, letter that the watchtower has sent and like we don't do yeah you know the other the, the usual spill and but people are now seeing through it it's it's crazy how uh, it's uh, there it's it's crazy because if the watchtower just showed a face and tried to apologize or, or something like that they would have it would have been in their benefit but they're so stubborn so in their own they're so delusional it, it's crazy but uh, people are seeing it yeah wow oh, so they're saying that they don't want to speak to the news media uh they, they don't want to speak face to face with the news media they only send letters to the news media okay yeah no sit down interviews on this subject none at all no, they, <laughs> Willing to sit down with somebody if you knew you were lying and you knew you were misleading, and you know you got to remember too that they're getting. So you're talking about the Bethel, the branch in um, the Netherlands. So yeah. now they're taking their orders from the branch from the main branch in the United States, and so of course they're getting the information. So the people at the people in the Netherlands, they probably want to say something. Who knows? But, but they yeah. they're so they're like pet, they're like puppets anyway. You know. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, like M. von Linge is the one, uh, the head honcho at Battle, and he did do a blunder where he he did get interviewed by a, a, a anchor, and they asked him like, "Okay, uh, we hear about CSA at your organization," and he said, "Oh, those are exaggerations. You can count the abuse on one hand." And I'm like, "Okay, so apparently this guy has thousand fingers because it's." Ridiculous, like, and that that quote was used also in the documentary. So uh, that is that is why <laughs> that is why I think the Watchtower doesn't want to 
because they will slip up. They will say something really dumb. And they, and like you said, it's really hard because they're always going to be a gotcha moment because they, what they're doing is inexcusable. So there's that is why they would rather do it in a lateral. It's easier. You can control control the narrative in a way. But it, it, it still backfire. They're still shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because you have no, if a person is asked a question, he's thinking off the top of his head, he'll say anything. And and you know, he has to be very careful because if not, he'll be out in the special pioneer work again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He spoke and he wasn't supposed to because yeah, he was authorized. You know, the Watchtower has designated spokespersons to speak on their behalf. And, you know, it's just like any other company, you know, like there have been, they said, I remember when I was going to school, going to college, and the, my degree was in that kind of, in that field where you would be a, a public relations person. And they said that keep your resume, if you go into that to that field, they said keep your resume handy because um, public relations people lose their job more than anyone else because oh. they are the fall guy for the company if they say the wrong thing. So Jehovah's Witnesses, they know that it's easy to slip up. You know what I mean? So at that point, like he said, special pioneer, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, you know, I, I've been, yeah, I, I, I haven't done it as active as, as long as you guys, but in my small activism, I realized very quickly that the Watchtower, even the spokesmen are very incompetent. They're not that smart as they think they are. So yeah, it's, it, they will slip up. It, 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 they can't help it. it it's just because they're not, uh, once again, this is, these people live in a... I've heard different stories, uh, that, uh, even in the parliament, uh, and stuff like that, how Bethelites, the ones that are they have to talk to these uh, institutions, how they're known for being delusional and very arrogant and rude. That, that was, I was surprised about that one. And so that they, they keep shooting themselves in the foot, uh, in the Dutch, like they say, yeah, in the Eiffel fingers, now you're um, cutting their own fingers. <laughs> this <is> weird Dutch <laughs> but, <laughs> Dutch saying, but they, 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 they can't help it. And that's why, in a way, they are losing. That's why they are being exposed. And a lot of things, is the things, we can, a lot of things that they say we can use because, yeah, they're just, they slip up. They can't help it. <laughs> right. Well, they're definitely chiseling away in the in Europe with the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's like we said, we got Norway, we got Belgium, and we got the Netherlands. And so the Watchtower, they're going to have to do. Some, that's why they're making all these changes. We we believe that they're making the changes with the beards and and saying that people can invite people to the Kingdom Hall and things like that. We believe that it's because of what's going on in those countries. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Watchtower is very. Uh, aware of precedent. Yep. That's what the organization knows because of in yep. the 40s, they understood winning certain cases in court could set precedent and it sets it all around the world uh, many times or it can be influenced because other countries will reference American law sometimes in their cases. And so they understand if, if the dominoes start falling, dominoes don't stop falling. Everybody knows no. that. I mean, <laughs> you you knock that one over, and they just go all around the table, boy. <laughs> and and that's what they know. Um, like I said, the big thing is we have complete access to information today. Yes, this is something that every high control group hates when people have access to information, and it's not just any information. In most cases. It is actually Watchtower's own information. Yes. So, yes. So it's not like you can't even say, well, y'all making it up. They, they, they. No, no. This is what y'all wrote. Yeah. You know, that's the reason why, <laughs> you know, we noticed that, you know, like some years ago, how, you know, JT often referenced how the Watchtower has become like a comic book where <laughs> they're not even trying to write, you know, like heavy articles or you know, like we used to have the times and times again. We said, what's the times and times and a half and 607 BCE and all Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, they would do all that type of writing. And, you know, and I think that was during the time when, when Fred Franz was president and he was still living, you know, back in the day. But now it's like puffball articles. You know, you <laughs> can't really quote them on a whole lot. Like Cheetos, you know, orange Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, it, but it's interesting you say about using even the Jimmy broadcast, like the famous uh, lab talk where he said the final part or the final part or the last part. Uh, 
They even put that clip in the documentary. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I was, I was geeking out. Uh, uh, that it's, I can't, I can't promote the documentary enough. Like, I, I, I think it's great. You know what? Since you have this this pool or this connection, you need to really think about seeing how they can get this documentary you know, translated into English or some other languages. So <laughs> that, that would be nice. I mean, that would be a wonderful um, thing to be um, played yeah, be here nice. in the States. Yeah. And I think we got what Netflix and Hulu and Amazon here. <laughs> but um, definitely, Man. definitely. I, I, um, I, have, uh, I still have the phone number of one of the producers. She's yeah. one of the researchers. You know, we have contact with, and I do have, uh, I can, of course, can come in contact with the director of the uh, uh, of the documentary because I met him also. He's very, he was very fascinated also with with everything he learned because he was also in a radio station where he explained like he was a lot of things. He was surprised. For example, uh, one of the things that surprised him is how they think that no one's gonna get safe except um, the Jehovah Witnesses that everybody's in the hand of the devil and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think. I can I can contact them and ask them like, hey, pe people from other countries also want to see this documentary, and maybe maybe I don't know because I can I can see them wanting to do it, but I, I don't know how it's how because it's a video land exclusive, it's original yeah. like you have Netflix exclusives. Yes, yeah, original stuff. Like stuff. Yeah, original stuff. Yeah, video land original, and so it. But I I can. I can see them thinking, considering it. I don't see why not, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I mean, it's good to know that good things are happening yeah, in other countries about this Jehovah's Witnesses and how it's really, you know, making mainstream. You know, yeah. people are like saying, wow, I thought these people were different, you know. But now it's like people are getting, the, um, you know, like, I, what I like about documentaries and things like this is people have the opportunity to sit down and watch it. And, of course, you can rewind it and all that kind of stuff. You miss the point, right? At yeah. that point, it's like you sometimes we don't explain it exactly the way we want to explain it. And then, you know, this documentary is hitting every point. And I think I really like the part about the children, about how you talked about how it brings them in to show just how indoctrinated they are. And that's really what keeps societies going is mm -hmm. the kids. It's, it's like if you want a, a, a teaching to remain, I don't care what it is, mm -hmm. if you get them when they're young, it's going to be hard to um, unindoctrinate that person. So I, I just like the way they showed that aspect as well. Yeah, they really did well. They really, they even um, showed the, uh, yeah, here now as we say, David and Sophie, I guess in your country is Caleb and Sophie, I think something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. They even showed clips of that uh, uh, in the documentary it's to, to, to demonstrate how far they're indoctrinating these kids and how th that affects them as adults. Like, as, like they... Certain things that even I didn't realize how deep it went. The fear for the the end days, like Armageddon, like once it's rooted into a child, it stays till adulthood, and it's great. It, it, the way they showed it, 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 like it, they it made it click. Like even I, as an ex witness, didn't even realize it. And when I saw, it, I was like, oh, okay, this goes deep. This goes deep. So yes, yeah, it's true. They the children, they're focusing on that. Right. So what are they saying? What, what, what kind of jokes are they saying on TV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So to give a little context, you have uh, Arjan Lubach. Uh, he's one of the biggest, uh, uh, is, he has one of the biggest late night shows, like uh, SNL version of the, of the Netherlands. And he, he, uh, he, he, he's also in his show, you can clearly see he done also his homework. Like he, 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 he explained, okay, what do the Juventus believe? And then he would, do really clever jokes and stuff like that. And even I saw Henry, they had a clip of Henry in it, and they had a clip of Hadassah, they had all, and even some of the clips of the documentary, and, it, and they explained really well. And uh, maybe I could have spoiled the end, but at some point, they even brought Sparlock, the, the character. And, uh, man, I was I was laughing. So I, I, I love that part so much, I clipped it, and then I, I translated it in, with the Dutch, uh, with English subtitles, and I put it on my YouTube channel, because I loved it so much. And I did. I did some things. I had to clip out because um, uh, you had to see the whole show to understand the context of certain jokes. But I just put the most important things because I was like, man, they like Luba is big. Like he's big here in the Netherlands. Like the I was when I heard when I saw it, like Luba talking about Joe Vences, I saw I was in oh my god, and, and 
especially at the end, I was I was laughing maniacally. I was crying. I was this is hilarious. This is big. It's like it's like if, I think the best way to describe it. It's like if they if one of the big um, late night shows comedians on SNL or something like started to make jokes about Jehovah Witnesses and even did characters of the of Sparlock. That's how that's how mainstream it got now. That's how big it got here in Netherlands. So I, I also recommend watching that that episode. It's it's hilarious. It's really tough. It's, they really did their homework. Like they did even the hundred forty four thousand and all those things. They even spoke about yeah, you already started the world with end in nineteen fourteen until nine seventy five and stuff. They did all those things. It was really I was I was impressed. I was impressed how they well they did the homework and also I was impressed of how they combined it with humor in a really good way. These guys wow. are yeah, I, I saw some of the clips that, that that was that was interesting. Comic comics have always made fun of Jehovah's Witnesses because Jehovah's Witnesses provide so much free material. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, we don't, you know, when we left, we didn't realize how many people were um, in Hollywood or you know, famous individuals or like one degree of separation from somebody that was. And so a lot of times they feed this information to them, like, you know, give them a script and tell them, you know, you looking for some material? I got yeah. some material, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or they were the, or the, or the, or the Jehovah's Witness is the person that's the comedian or yeah. the, the person that's doing the show. And so at that point, you know, they got, they got plenty of material, plenty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, so I mean, it, 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 it's, it's been an interesting journey over the, over the last few years as we have watched this religion just morph and change yeah. because of the pressure it has nothing to do with God revealing new light. They just got to change it else. They'll get run over by all the laws that are coming down. And it's kind of ironic. You would think they would simply say, we obey God as ruler rather than man, you know, yeah. do whatever you want to us, but we're on Jehovah's side, but they don't do that. Like, okay, let's go back and change this and see if we can keep the money coming. You know? <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty, it's, that, that point with that you're saying is good because, you know, all my life growing up, you know, when I was in school being ridiculed by my teachers, I think it was more so for me, it was the teachers more so than the children. Because the mm. children in my class didn't understand Jehovah's Witnesses. But this one man that was my my teacher, he was a decorated officer that had, that had retired from the military. And then he became a school teacher in, in my elementary school. And he said, I will not allow any student in my class to sit here and not salute the flag. Mm. And of course, you know, like, like JG just kept saying, we'll, we'll, we would rather obey God as ruler rather than men. So in the back of my mind, back of my head, I'm being taught as a child that this is how I'm supposed to look at that. This is, I am the Daniel in the lion's den, right? Yeah. And so it was not, it was not till years later that I saw this particular teacher's obituary. And I didn't know he was a decorated, you know, officer, whatever it was. I forgot what, what his title was, but he was heavily into the military. Yeah. And of course, you know, so like it's like you're sitting here in class not saluting the flag. And it's like this is what his whole life was about. Yeah. And so basically the Watchtower, then they tell us to do things that they don't do themselves. Like, yeah. like you said, JT, yeah. we're not going to just go out and tell the news media um, we obey God as ruler rather than men because they know they're going to look crazy. Yeah. They know people don't think they're stupid. You know, <laughs> say what? You, you got a group of people that you're leading and you're, this is what you're telling them, you know? Mm. And so um, they're not going to do that they, because they know how ridiculous that sounds, you know? But they didn't have no problem telling us to do that individually, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they, they, it, it, uh, that's why I discovered also they're, they're cowards, the Watchtower. Like yeah. they, they're willing to let uh, the member. Uh, the members do uh, sacrifice losing jobs. I, I know people who lost their jobs because they refused to to even switch a light bulb in a church. And now, now you got selling kingdom halls to, to other religions. I'm like, well, okay, oh, all right. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay. <laughs> this is what's all going right. on here? That's how crazy it yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And what what other highlights do you have about what's happening in your area? 
Well, let me see because I did have some, uh, I did some uh, notes because uh, I'm, I, I can go everywhere. <laughs> but there is a protest in Amsterdam in uh, Johan Cruyff Arena, and uh, it's on the twentieth. It's a uh, it's a silent protest because uh, Stephen Lett is uh, the one that said uh, uh, the final part, the final part, and so forth. And he'll be he'll be uh, giving a talk in that big arena. So they'd be uh, so we decide even with uh, another activist, uh, goat like personality is also um, going to be there. Uh, and he even interviewed Hadassah. Was, I, didn't, I didn't know that, uh, by the way. But anyways, a, um, he, there's going to be, I think there's going to they even even I was invited, but I don't know if I'm going to make it, to be honest. <laughs> Since, um, yeah, one of the reasons is because um, I, uh, I, I've, I've taken a step back from the activism. But uh, if you want to know more, you can get in contact with, with Henry. Um, because he's the one also organizing the uh, protest. You can go to the website, is nowisthetime.nu, and there you can uh, contact him. He's very approachable, so uh, he doesn't mind uh, if he doesn't mind uh, coming in contact. He's, he's willing to talk. He, he's talk, spoken to different XGOWs and JWs, and it's very interesting to get the behind the scenes of certain things like for example about the shunning that there are even elders here in the netherlands active elders who are also against the shunning and there are there are members inside the organization that also are against the shunning and would want it to be removed so it's very interesting they even signed a petition i put it that way wow so then just get those links together and we'll put them here in the description of this video so for in individuals wanting to know more about the, some of the things that we've talked about then they can just check the description of the video and we can have those links available yeah, yeah. thank you thank you you're welcome yeah wow so this is great this is, a, yeah. this is nice to be able to uh speak to people in other countries uh yeah you know throughout our life you know we've always heard about jehovah's witnesses in other countries and and we we only were able to talk to the ones talking about how to remain how to continue on in the cult fashion yeah. of not being able to see what needs to be seen and hear what needs to be heard. And now we're talking to someone about how to get out of it, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, when they look at us, they look at us and say, oh, look at them. They got fire and brimstone coming out of their eyes and <laughs> ears. <laughs> and it's like, we're just like any other uh, person. Yeah. And we want to be treated fairly just like anybody else. Exactly. And we don't want to be controlled by a group of people that's trying to keep us from, you know, just enjoying our life and our families, you know. So we appreciate yeah. talking to you yeah. as well and okay. seeing that, you know, um, we're all in this together. We're yeah. all yes. here together working as one. Yeah. We yeah. share we share this commonality of, of recognizing that a lot of the things that we were told mm. simply was not true. That's the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm, I'm almost taking a break from activism because uh, I think I've done so well. Uh, because, for example, I even got into the local newspaper. I think I have one here. Let me see if I can get it. Like, here. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me here? Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, what did you do wrong? <laughs> yeah, what did I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, uh, it, it, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. Yeah, because uh, also about the um, the shunning policy and how cruel it is, and how I got excommunicated, and and also I was in another documentary from Pointer where I also uh, explained what happened to me and uh, in the Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff like that. Um, so uh, and and also even it, it got to the point now because. Even the language group that I was a member, because here in the Netherlands, the city where I live, um, there's, of course, a Dutch congregation. And then you have the language group that is part of it. And that was the Papiamento. The so Papiamento is a, yeah, it, it's, just, uh, it's a language that's speaking in the Caribbean, in Curaçao, Aruba and stuff. And I heard, I think this month, uh, uh, April 1st, I know it kind of sounds like a joke, but that's the <laughs> same month that I got excommunicated is now the same month that they dismantled the Papimento group. So oh my like, goodness! Yeah, the universe is funny, but <laughs> wow, <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. And because I, I did play a part, because I was a very integral part of it. Because I was minister servant, I even uh, baptized someone on the water and stuff like that. I've I've done many things, and I knew they were in trouble because I was coming from the supermarket, 
and I was walking, I think I saw like a small Toyota Igo, and it was one of the elders that excommunicated me in the in the judicial community. And he was like, Hey, you can I talk to you? You know, I went and selling Papi Mento, like Papi Kubo, hey, Papi. And I was like, No, 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 Mister. I, I told him like it's not necessary. And I just walked away because I thought I was gonna curse him out, to be honest. <laughs> but when I saw him, I think because I did some research, I realized, oh yeah, that's just an old man. He's just a man. Yeah. And I just left and then after a year i hear yeah this it's been removed because i even went one of my one of my baba students that i met he told me like yeah yuri i left that congregation i'm going to another congregation because they were talking so negative about you so i left so even though he's still mentally in even he found it so unjust that he just went to another congregation so it, 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 the whole communication as communication so and then as some passed away is and eventually it died out and I was like, wow. So uh, so I I think I've done enough. <laughs> like, uh, how many, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't mind, may I ask, about how many publishers do they have? About 40 publishers? No, nah, that's not. Uh, the, the. I think one of the reasons why I dismantled is because they only had like 10 publishers, at least here in, this, in the city where I live. There are more in other cities, obviously. Uh, and, but uh, it's a small congregation. But even then, I've, from what I heard from my mom, uh, she said, like half of the congregation is on Zoom, and uh, I, uh, the, the, like let's say they have hundred publishers, like I think seventy of them are on Zoom. Like, wow. the, like it's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. The, the congregation that you were affiliated with when you got excommunicated, how many people were there then? Ooh, uh, when okay, so I think usually congregation has like hundred. Yeah. They, they they got more because what happened you have different congregations and one congregation had to be removed because uh they were they were getting they, they only had elderly like if you went to that congregation it, it looked like a uh a, how do you call it to high senior uh, citizens senior citizens yeah senior citizen home it looked like a senior citizen home so okay. uh, uh, and so they had to remove the congregation and fuse it with the other one so that's why it seemed big but even then it started to shrink again so um yeah, I think, uh, and that's the reason why I think I just I, I, I decided to stop. I, I think like, oh yeah, the the we won. Yeah, there's still a lot of work, obviously, mm -hmm. but that is why I'm also in the camp of yeah. I think they're gonna remove the shining because if if you're a corporation, if you're a company, and you want to keep customers, you have to change your policies or you have to change something. Otherwise, you go bankrupt. Yep. So, so it, they have to because I think even with their own numbers. They only grew like 0.4% last year or something like that. So if this keeps going after two, three years, they'll go bankrupt. So they have to change or do something. Otherwise, uh, they'll go bankrupt. So yeah, so now I'm just investing in my own company and doing work. And, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It is, it is amazing. Uh, right. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens down the road. I, I think they will become basically what they call milk toast. They'll just become like any, they become like the Presbyterians, Episcopalians. Right. They'll just become one of those non uh, dangerous religious groups. They just, they just become a passive religion. Yes. yes. You know, I mean, you, you take, for example, you know, the, the, what we call the Holy Rollers or the, you know, the Evangelicals or the Pentecostals. You know, they're, they're exciting. They're excited. Jehovah's Witness is just going to be like, and I, yeah, yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, right. you, you, you remember, I don't know if you, I don't know if you watch it when in, in, in America, we had, you know, we watched Charlie Brown. And oh, they would yeah. get they would get the Charlie Brown teacher on the on the phone and, and it would go like wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and, and so that's kind of what witnesses are becoming. They're not gonna go out in field service anymore. Once yeah. you once they're told they can turn in what is known as um uh, uh what it was is your, your your unformal hours in informal witnesses. Yeah, the minute yeah. the watch I, I, when I saw it, I said I told the guy I said, man, this is this is it. <laughs> the minute the watchtower said you can count informal witnessing the same as you can formal witnessing, it's done. Mm. I remember people who would turn in like 10, 12 hours, and because they was in the book study, the elders like, well, we ain't see you none of the Saturdays. Or oh, I was just talking to folks on the job, my family. No, 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 no. You, you got to go out there and knock on doors. And so once they went to the to the informal witnessing, will now justify. And there is no time limit, man. It's over with now. Nobody's going to feel it. 
Why would you go out and feel so if you can inform a witness and get your little two hours for the month and you're done? Right. Exactly. I mean, my dad talked about when he was a witness and before he left, the book study conductor, <laughs> you know, he was like, well, how many hours did you get in? And so if my dad said he got like one or two, then the, the book study conductor would say, oh, you probably did four or five. And then he would like pad his time. And my dad was like, he was like, look at him. Like I got one or two hours in. Then if he said he didn't have any in, he'll say, oh, I'm sure you got one or two. So he never, he never um, just avoided putting any time down for my dad. Yeah. He always kind of like padded his hours. So it's like, because I guess they feel like, you know, when the circuit overseer comes and you are the book study conductor and you got people in your book study that's showing up as big old fat zero or just reporting one hour, that means you ain't managing your ship. <laughs> or managing your people, you know? And so I guess he felt like, I need to show that these people are doing something under my watch. Yeah. And I guess that's what he, I guess that's the way he felt. And that's what he did. Yeah, I, I used you to know? do that too. I, 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 <laughs> when, when I, yeah, when I, yeah, when I, when I was the, uh, when, I was, when I was the secretary, <laughs> <laughs> When I was a secretary, you know, you had like the old friends, and you'd be like, "Well, I'm sure she'd probably talk to somebody. We'll, put it, oh, okay. we'll, we'll give her an hour, you know." I mean, it was all, those you two billions. Give me five or six. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, those billions God. of hours were all bogus. Yeah, they're bogus. Well, somebody. Yeah, that's why I think they removed the hour recommendation. They removed, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. Oh, that, that's why they removed the hour requ um, requirements, I guess, because now that you even have to, you can only just do a. F uh, think something and then check check something mark, and box mark, and then then uh, and that, that's it. It's great. Yeah, I hear that. I, I, like that's the thing. I, I've only left for like three years, and so much has changed. It's ridiculous. It's I think ridiculous. if I <laughs> if I think if I went to the funeral hall, I don't think I would recognize it. I've, I've been seeing sisters with pants. Like what's going on? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. You know, we we have been hearing reports over the years that the Watchtower had companies that would like, you know, evaluate them and, you know, be like a consultant and give them ideas on how to run things. And somebody had made the comment that they believe that because they had a nonprofit status, that number requirement was showing that, hey, look, we are doing something and this is the numbers that we're showing to get the status and things like that to show what we're doing. So now, like you just said, Yuri, you said they just got to check a box and just say blah, blah, blah. So now this outside consultant probably helped them out in that area too. Well, look, mm -hmm. you got 8 million people checking a box and how many boxes were checked? And, you know, so now we can measure, because, you know, a lot of times when you, you know, I work as a trainer and, and we have to measure our training. If we give out, we give out, sometimes we give out these ISAT credits that people can you know put towards um continuing education and mm. when we do our training we have to be able to measure the learning in order to give them a grade to be able to give them these credits right so the same thing with jehovah's witnesses when it comes to these you know like before they measured you by how many hours you put in but now that they're trying to dumb it down it's like hey look how many boxes were checked how many people you got in your organization eight million how many boxes were checked? Seven million, you know? So at that point, that's a way of measuring that we did something. It's not just saying we're not, we're not, you know, preaching or we're not doing something, but they're just trying to satisfy some requirement to the government if that's what they're doing. Yeah, you know? okay, true, See what I'm saying? True. Because you're yeah. asking for, when you really think about it, you're asking for a lot Yeah. to be, <laughs> to be tax exempt, you know? So um, I'm not a nonprofit. I don't know if you've ever been a nonprofit. I don't know what they're asking for on those forms. You know, I don't know if you just got to just have a Bible in your hand and, and saying that you say amen after a prayer. I don't know what people are giving them for this, this tax exempt status. But if that's the case, anybody could do that just to get a non, to get a tax exempt. And I think yeah. there's more to it than that. Yeah. If, one, of the, one of the problems the Watchtower runs into with tax exemption is that the Watchtower has nothing that they do in the community. Yeah, exactly. Even exactly. when I was, even when I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I always thought, man, we can at least do something, have a food shelter bank or help out with the homeless or something. But right. we didn't do anything. And so the Watchtower tries to classify teaching people not to smoke and saving money on cigarettes is 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 their. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's oh because uh, you know what? Uh, because you have um, a organization uh, called Lakers Des Hells here in uh, I, I don't know. I think it's the Saving Army. Any, anyways, it's a it's a Christian organization where um, you can donate clo uh, your clothing. Like because I don't like throwing it in the garbage. It's, it seems like a waste. So you can donate the clothing to that organization. And I remember one time in the Kingdom Hall, I think the coordinator said, "Yeah, we Europeans do not donate those things." I'm gonna be, I think that was one of the things that really bothered me as a Jewish. Like, okay, but that seems like a waste. So it, it, indeed, you're right. Like they're not they're not uh, they're they're nonprofit, but they don't do uh, nothing um for the welfare or the well-being for the community. And I think that's also one of the reasons why I think it's important that that's also about trying here uh, in the Netherlands with the with the found Dutch Foundation. Dutch Foundation, I guess what I was shouting is to also uh, remove their status as a religion and remove the uh, as as a nonprofit because they're not doing anything well. And oh yeah, before I forget, like one of the uh, um, political parties, SP, uh, called the Socialist Party or something like that. Um, but anyways, uh, the one of the uh, member of the Dutch Parliament. Uh, I have a clip also in one of my videos also where he says that they have to do an investigation about the CSA in the in the Jewish witnesses and they and the, they got a majority vote from all the other uh, par, um, um, parties. So they're going to reinvestigate the Jewish witnesses because thanks due to the um, uh, documentary, because the document that, that's how how much influence the document have had that even the political parties and the governments are paying. They, in fact, the governments got the documentary uh, earlier than everybody because that's how important it was for them to know the truth behind the truth. And when they saw the documentary, they were like, "Oh, we gotta reinvestigate this. We gotta check. Okay, we gotta see what's going on there because freedom of religion is not only the freedom to practice it, but also the freedom to switch without being." punished for it. And that's what they're um, doing right now. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, so them trying to make adjustments and then not being held responsible for the damage that they've done? Is that uh, what you're talking about? Is that? No, no, I'm, I'm talking about um, uh, right now, uh, because I forgot to mention that right now, uh, the governments right now are investigating the CSA cases of the Juvenile Witnesses right now. Oh, so, okay. And that was thanks to the documentary. That was thanks to this documentary. So it's, okay. uh, and, and in fact, the government's got the documentary before anybody here in the Netherlands. Uh, all the government, uh, all the political, the leaders of the political party got access to it uh, right. earlier, or early access. They're even trying to maybe even change the law because, for example, in the Netherlands, you have what they call for schoningswet uh, or the right for silence because if you're a preacher or a lawyer, you're allowed to um, keep silent, right? But uh, I think it was last year the government raided the headquarters of Bethel here in the Netherlands, and they got like a bunch of information about uh, those who committed CSA. So they already got all the the names, but they couldn't use it in court because of their uh, because they are non-profit because they are considered religious, and they can and so there's actually the evidence is there, but they're being protected because they are religion. So. I think they should, the women, especially here in the Netherlands, I think everywhere, should lose their status as religion uh, everywhere because they, a lot of things that they do is just criminal and they are hiding uh, abusers. So, and they do have the information, they do have the names, they do have, they, they got everything on these guys. The, um, the, 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 the Justice Department has the evidence, they have all of it, but they couldn't use it in court because they were a religion and and they, they, they had the right for to, to keep silent about these things. Yeah, that's why here in the United States, a lot of uh, states and, and, and so forth, they're re-examining whether or not to give absolute uh, silence to ministers when they know crimes have been committed. And basically, right. they are rolling back the laws that protected these organizations for so years, so many years. And this is yeah. kind of what the Watchtower does. It hides behind these laws, which is really ironic. I mean, for, for me, just from a, and that's why we call our channel Critical Thinking, out of all organizations that you would think would not do that would be a religious organization. Yeah. A religious organization that knows children have been taken advantage of. You would think we're going to set the example and let you, let us, let you see. We're going to not hide you behind us. We, we get out. You know, we, but that's not what they do. And it's been no. the religions. 
It's been the religions that have fought the hardest not yeah. to have to tell what goes <laughs> on inside. Oh, you got a little religion for it. Religion, religion, religion can be amazing sometimes. It really can. <laughs> I mean, they can. I mean, they can feed the homeless. They can put shelters up. But boy, they can do some crazy stuff as well. Boy. Yeah. Oh, this, I, I don't know. I, I just think okay. it's because I, I, I personally believe that it's because it's just human nature. Um, mm -hmm. as humans throughout throughout the centuries, throughout the beginning of humanity. Um, humans have been cre uh, have been committing crimes against other humans, yeah. and I just feel like when you put people in big groups, small groups, whatever it is, there's going to be someone there that's going to commit a crime against somebody. Yeah, and it's the way that that institution handles it that actually makes a person safe or not. Yeah. So if you're known for allowing people to be in your group. And you got to remember that money talks, right? Yeah. yeah and everything true. else walks, you know? So if people are powerful and they got information, they can do a lot of stuff and you can stuff money in their pockets and people will look the other way. It happens in politics all the time. Yeah. So yeah. These are the, these are the dangers that you have. And I think what makes the Jehovah's Witnesses so dangerous is the fact that we can't talk. We're not allowed to speak out. Um, other other religions don't, well, they, I'm not gonna say other religions because I've gotten emails and comments on videos I've done and people have actually talked about that. They've actually said, you think that Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones that deal with this. That's not true. No. So there's <laughs> other people that deal with it as well. But we do know that I, I can say this for a fact, uh, based on my own personal experience. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses, they got that shunning thing down to a science. Mm. I mean, they got that down to, to, it's such an exact science that you don't have to commit any wrongdoing. Just talk to somebody who did and they're disfellowship and you're going to be disfellowship. You know, I don't know anybody who does that. I, I mean, have you heard of another group? Maybe there could be. But to the level of people who go knocking on doors at the level that Jehovah's Witnesses do, that's always up in people's face, trying to witness to them and bring them into their group. And then they got this squeaky clean image where I've had people come up against me telling me I'm wrong. Wow. How can you say that about Jehovah's Witnesses? I got so and so and so, and they're they're good people. Like I'm like I'm the bad guy, <laughs> and the person that you know, and all I'm doing is just giving my own personal experience about the leadership. And what they allow and people are like that. So their image is so squeaky clean that people don't even get it. You know, they don't even understand, you know, what you're saying. I think that's why that documentary that you're talking about really, you know, hits the nail on the head because it just takes you there and yeah. gives you the information. Not just me having a conversation in five minutes. I'm expecting you to understand everything there is about Jehovah's Witnesses from A to Z. And that's what we're dealing with sometimes. You know, people can't get that in a five minute conversation, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot going on. And I, and I think that, you know, you know, I, I applaud you and all the other people out here that's making a difference in, oh, in, the, in this, in the community, you know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah it's funny. People, I don't know. <laughs> people will say, yeah, you're very brave and, uh, and, and so on, but I don't know. I was just, I, I just couldn't handle the injustice. I was like, I got to do something. <laughs> so, okay. oh, yeah. 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 That's what drives people to activism. They they want to, they've seen a wrong and they want to at least make their contribution to trying to fix the wrong. Yeah. And I think uh, what has taken place is just a flood of information. There's just so much. We talk to people who've been disfellowed for 20 years and they'll still tell us, I didn't even know that. So. Um, yeah, when they start looking at videos like this and we started discussing specific topics, I didn't know that. And and so without and that's what has been the Watchtower's saving grace for decades. Nobody mm -hmm. knows anything about them beyond what they want them to know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So their squeaky clean image is breaking. I wouldn't be surprised if they both for a few years changing the name. <laughs> well, they've, already, they they've already have. They, they, yeah, they don't they don't use the watchtower. The word watchtower is not used very much. They they prefer to use jw.org. Oh. Uh from what I understand, this is what I was told. 
like she, my wife has mentioned before, the, the organization hires consulting firms. Yeah. And when they did the consulting firm, the word watchtower does not show up very positive in 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 in, in tests. When people are watched, oh, oh. <laughs> But JW.org is 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 a knock is 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 is, is unknown. JW.org. I mean, if you were going to school, how would you spend that now? If we like when we were going to school, we had to carry that. Those two words were huge for me. Yeah. Jehovah's Witness. And I used to be so embarrassed to say that. But now kids can just say, oh, we belong to JW.org. So at that point, it's like that don't mean nothing to nobody, no, right? No. But, oh. oh, my God, when we were coming along, going to school and how embarrassing that was and not understanding that word and everything. It was just it, to me, it was like people would just look at you like you were crazy. Yeah. Like, who? You're what? Because a lot of people didn't even know when we were coming along. Jehovah's Witnesses were not popular. No, no. no. Mm -mm. The, 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 the word Jehovah's Witness and Watchtower has a very negative connotation when people hear it. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it, it, has, it registers negatively. Yeah. I mean, it, it literally, yeah, I mean, it registers negatively. Um, yeah. And that's why comics yeah. make jokes about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that's why they're oh, losing man. members yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. yeah, crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so um, what was, did we cover all your points um, here? Yeah. Which yeah, you uh, yeah. You guys did great. Yeah, you guys did great, of course. You know, uh, yeah, we talk a little bit about the the protests at Battle. That I, uh, I don't know if you guys want to go. I think we did, we spoke a little about it, but uh, okay. So let's talk like, about that. So so okay. So now, but you're you're talking about you were you were you were telling us, you know, earlier before we started this this um interview with you that there's going to be a protest in the Netherlands. You want to talk a little bit about what it's about and when it's going to be, when is, when is it going to take place? Oh yeah. So yeah, we have a, a Johan Cruyff Arena is uh, in Amsterdam. It's uh, usually is used for, um, for uh, soccer to play soccer and uh, play there, but it's also sometimes for other, other e big events. And uh, Stephen led one of the governing body members will be having a talk there. So, um, so the Dutch foundation against what I was shining has organized a protest on 20th of April. And so if you want more information, you can contact um, uh, Henry, Henry Dallum at now is the time that in you, that and you, and there we, they're going to organize a protest and, and a silent protest for uh, the, uh, for all the GW uh, um, uh, survivors or, or, or um, victims. So uh, and because uh, yeah, so the, the even the Henry Dalm even wrote a letter to the mayor of Amsterdam, stating like, "Hey, this is a, a cult leader. That, uh, there's no other way of saying it," and and, and talking about like, uh, you, "Are you guys sure you should you should give such a big platform to someone like that?" Like, uh, yes, do, who's if we're gonna be honest, it's a bit of the extreme side. So uh, the, so there's a lot of so there's gonna be a protest there. So I'm I'm really um interested so but before that we also did a protest uh at the headquarters in Bethel uh here in, uh, in this not, not here but in Emmen and where um me and a group uh we we jump over a fence I got a whole I got even two YouTube videos where I do that <laughs> uh where we protested because we wanted to give a letter to M. Falinga, one of the head uh, guys at Bethel at Bethel uh, I've had different react, mixed reactions that I, I did expect. Um, some people are like, yeah, but can't you just write a letter? And I'm like, listen, we, we've done it like three times. <laughs> we've done it like four times. They didn't take the letter. So the last time we did a protest, Henry handcuffed himself to the entrance and uh, where he would um, demand that they um, read the letter. The, 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 there were different news crews. And yes, even the ones who produced the documentary was also there. So it was uh, a very interesting um, uh, experience, and, and and we so it, it it is actually a strategy because we know obviously they will not probably not read the letter, but it is a a a, a, a stepping stone so that if we when we take legal actions because we have taken legal uh, taking legal actions we have um, we hired uh, Olivier de Prake. Is um, is one of the best human rights lawyers here in the Netherlands, 
and then they uh, they also guide us for the protest. So we didn't. It, it, there's a there's a method to the madness when we protest at <laughs> battle. But uh, yeah, so um, so they they our lawyers or at least the foundation of the lawyer uh, the, the Dutch foundation lawyers have to contact the Watchtower, and there the, there's talks. So um, because we we want to prove to the uh, at least to the judge that we have tried uh, to uh, start a dialogue and we have tried. Um, um, how do you say to talk about uh, the shunning policy and stuff like that? And there, but they were not willing, so that's why we had to take it to court. So it, it is one of the reasons. But once again, uh, the Dutch Foundation, and there are probably there's also other activists uh, uh, that are coming to the 20th of April uh, to Amsterdam, the Johan Cruyff uh, Arena. Yeah. Let me ask you a question: When you are talking about a silent protest. Does this mean that they're not going to have any placards and stuff like that? They're just going to show up, and how how is that going to um, play? Well, out? they were still uh, working out the details right now of how to protest. Uh, I think they don't want to give too much information on how they're going to protest. And it could be that they're going to have signs. We're not going to be violent. It's going to be a peaceful protest. It could be that we have spoke to the mayor, so there will be um, things that will be uh, shut off, so we can walk with protest signs saying that uh, talking about the shunning and the uh, hiding of the CSA cases. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's the focus on it. So it's really important. The more people that can be there, the better. And um, yeah, I think I think it's going to be big because I think there are a lot of, a lot of ex-witnesses uh, that I know of are aware of this. So uh, we'll see. There's a method to the madness. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, Pretty I tell you, it. man, we have definitely enjoyed having you on, uh, just sharing us and giving us an update of what's happening over there on that side of the pond, as we often say. Um, and we wish y'all guys the very best. I think, as we've often said, as long as we're getting information out there to people, people can then take the information and then they can decide. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Absolutely. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So this has been Lady C. And this has been JT. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Absolutely. Take care. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.